going to kind of progress now to the stage of this of this episode where we're going to give true hot takes hotter takes than than that one right there we, we each came with we prepared two or so okay do you want to start yeah i got two hot takes and an honorable mention which is like flaming hot and okay yeah, you'll see that's a pun pretty quickly um number one hot take we talked about this a lot so i won't i won't say it too much again the Vol- the golden knights win the pacific and they make the western conference final i think that's a pretty hot take team is incredibly built to win michael Barner said it very well like they're defensively fantastic people forget petro theodore martinez white cloud is a fantastic top four great forward depth despite losing patches like come on stone eichel smith marchesel carlson the team is clearly a playoff team they're also just very underrated right now because they're dysfunctional like that's mm-hmm. what it is if, if you took this team he took away all of the the things off the ice that's going on with the vegas golden knights everyone thinks they're a lock for the playoffs and the reason why i say that is because people had them as cup favorites last year and they didn't True. change marginally minus patch who missed half the season he was he wasn't really a factor right i mean we one can say that they lost a goalie that's fine let's for not forget robin leonard was pretty bad last year and i really think given how aggressive the vegan the, the vegas golden knights front offices that they're gonna go out and get a goalie also aiden hill isn't bad who knows maybe they go get varlamov and we're right regardless i do think that with an above average goalie Considering that Bruce Cassidy is also there, this team can go far. One other thing is that we talked about the um, the lack of accountability. That that that's their biggest problem. Like I said, Cassidy comes from a, a market that has the most accountability in the league. From yeah. Boston, he's a guy that's going to go into that locker room and set everyone straight, take out that mess. And yeah, I, I think Vegas blows the Pacific out of the water. That's a big call, but I I could actually see it happening. It's just tough to see with like basically the narrative surrounding that team. But I know you would love to see that happen. Okay, let's hear yours. So sticking with it, so a, a, a team who's not getting a lot of coverage, you think they're going to do well? Two teams in the Atlantic who everyone is like so high on, the Senators and the Wings, neither of them are going to make the playoffs. Uh, that's a good one. Neither of them. I don't think either of them are good enough to crack the top three. Mm-hmm. Um, Boston also still exists. right? So they're going to be battling with Boston for a wild card, I think, in my opinion. Then you also have the borderline teams in the Metro, the Pens, the Caps, the Islanders, even the Columbus, if they can build off of their pretty crazy off season to push for a playoff spot, that's six teams I just named. There are five or six teams fighting for two spots, and I don't know if the air, um, the lack of experience on those two teams might come back to bite them in terms of this playoff race. I mean, good good for those fan bases, good for those teams for like clearly taking a step in the right direction. But I don't think it manifests in a playoff spot this year, and I think they're left um, kind of with with nothing with nothing, nothing tangible to show for the season beyond progress. I don't even know if that takes so much hot as it is logical. Like they're in well, the best just, division in the NHL. Well, we we had people we had, and we still have people saying give me the Sens top 6 or the Leafs top 6. So <laughs> people who clearly think the Senators are a borderline elite team for some reason. I and think, they're not. I think two people, two types of people believe that. Senators fans and just Leafs haters. Which is 95% of the league. That's Let's fair. be real. That's fair. So I don't know. I don't mean to put a damper on their exciting off seasons. I just think they're going to have to wait a couple years specifically for Boston to really blow up that court. Then I think the lane will be open. I just don't think it's open right now. Mm -hmm. Fair. Okay. My next hot take. Um, We're going to go to the Metro here. The Pittsburgh Penguins win the Metro and make the Eastern Conference Finals. Oh, baby. Yes. I think 103 points last year. The winner was 116. The drop-off isn't that huge. Carolina is always a good regular season team, but Patches is out half the year. They lost a huge depth player in Vincent Trocek, who is the heart and soul of that second line. And that's not even being dramatic. Rob Brindamore is open about how much he loved Vincent Trocek as a player. He's gone. Who knows if Anderson's going to be healthy again? And when he is healthy, who knows if he's going to be that Vesna caliber goalie that he was last year, considering that injuries. The Rangers are still a good team. They got Trocek. They lost Kopp. I think those are two pretty even players. Like the argument I'm trying to make here is that the two teams who are pr- like statistically probably going to win the Metro. Um, either got marginally worse or remained the same. And now when we look about Pittsburgh, they have so much motivation this year, yep. especially against their divisional rivals. We talked about this a bit earlier in the episode. They should have won that series against New York. And I understand should have, would have, could have. They didn't get it done. Fine. New York beat them. But 
like let's call a spade a spade. If Sidney Crosby didn't get hurt for half of that, for a quarter of, or a bit of that series because Truba elbowed him in the head, and if Tristan Jari played the whole series, if they didn't play with the third string goalie, they probably would have won one of the, those last four yeah, games. They're for up sure three, they would They're for up sure. three one, right? They're they're in a must win situation right now. They signed all three of those players who are aging to huge deals. They need to perform, and when they're healthy. Like Crosby, Malkin, Latang, Rust, Gensel, Raquel, that is a fantastic core. This mm-hmm. th- this team was not a wild card team last year, am I correct? Um they played no, they were third. They were right. third. They were not a wild card team last year, and they la- they they missed considerable time from Crosby, Malkin, Gensel, Jari, all of them, all of them. And they still Even Rust. Were, right? Rust as well. They were still not a wild card team. And now you have a poised Malkin who wants to quiet all the haters in the front office of that Pittsburgh Penguins organization who didn't want to give them more than four years. I think this team is motivated to win and they're desperate to win because they don't have many years left. True. They're 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 kind of um given this identity now that they're a first round exit team. I think they want to quiet all these haters and I think they do it. That's a good one. I, I mean we talk about this all the time whenever the Pittsburgh Penguins come up, like we want them to succeed. One because we they don't have a rivalry with the Leafs, but also we love Sid. We want to see him win again. So I'm I'm on board with that take. I want to see them succeed. Mine, this one's rooted in, in self interest. I'll be honest with you. I'll be <laughs> honest. Jack Hughes is a is my is a keeper in my fantasy league that we're both in, and so I'm manifesting that Jack Hughes hits 45 goals and 100 points this year. Wow, 45. I'm calling it. The, I, the 45 is a hotter take than the 100. Well, he was on pace for 90 in the second half of last season. He is also. Getting better. He's in that age where every year you get a little stronger, you get a little bit better. So if he was, let's say, a 90-point player in the last half of last season, I think he can take that up a next level. He's going to be playing with a better better wingers this year. And Andre Palat, maybe Jesper Bratt will continue playing with him. It's a pretty damn good first line. We talked about how we didn't necessarily like the Palat deal, which is still true, but he's an objective upgrade over whoever. I don't even know who he was playing with. That's how much of an upgrade he is. Fair. So I think all of those combined with the fact that Jack Hughes is just, he's a flashy, saucy man, and I think he's going to do it. And I think I'm going to be very happy with my fantasy team this year if he can do that. And so manifesting self-interest all boils down to a 45-goal season, 100-point season for Jack Hughes, Captain America. Damn, I'll give you two first for him right now. We're in the same fantasy division, Shoot. by the way. That's why I say it. I'd probably, I'd probably could can strongly consider it for forty-five goals and a hundred points. I'll give up two first-round picks. Well, like I can get two good year. players in the first. It That's depends. Good. We'll see. I gotta see. I got, but now, I, not, but now I can't trade him. I just made this claim. He's mine. I gotta eat this now. Fair. Do you have one more hot take or no? No, I was gonna t- my my like. I just realized like after talking to Michael and after talking like earlier in our episode, like I had okay, Boston's not gonna make the playoffs. I don't think that's really a hot take. I think that's just like. A very like realistic possibility if things don't go well quickly after those guys return from injury. So it's not really a hot take, so I'm not gonna like say it as a hot take. But that, that was like my backup. If you had what one of the same ones that I did. Fair. Um, no, I didn't have one. I had an honorable mention though. Okay. And this is a flaming hot take. Flaming. Flaming, as in Calgary Flames. Uh oh. This is a hot one. I think there's a non-trivial chance here that Calgary implodes, misses the playoffs, and these deals cripple the organization. Jesus Christ. And remember, this is hot. This doesn't mean that I think it is will 100% happen, but there is a real possibility. Number one, Nazem Kadri, 32 years old. I want to see him do well, but there is an objective possibility that he regresses hardcore towards his pre- last year self and doesn't put up 87, puts up 55-60, and becomes once again um, a depth forward. There is also a very real possibility that Jonathan Huberto just does not fit in a defensive system organization that Daryl Sutter um, provides. And if that's the case where he needs to take on more of a defensive load, if Jonathan Huberto now puts up 85 points instead of 110, that's a lot of points that are gone compared to that last year's team, right? If Hubie plays 25 minutes, he can no longer hide behind a Selkie winning um, first line center in Sasha Barkov. That first line will be exposed. They're going to turn into the, um, the the Edmonton Oilers who need to win game 6-5. Mm. And I don't know if they have the offensive firepower to do that. True. What I'm trying to say here, like, do I think Calgary's going to make the playoffs? Yes. This is a hot take because I think if... Um, if everything hits the fan and everything goes from bad to worse, there is a possibility that this team does it. Like they got more expensive. They got older, right? They got better this year 
just because they added Uyghur. But with the caveat of this hot take is that I think these deals cripple the organization because I don't think Mackenzie Uyghur signs back. And if he doesn't, and this year's a problem, oh boy, Trey Living yeah. goes from a statue to tearing <clears throat> that statue down. Yeah. Trey Living, well, speaking of that, like the Trey Living's like future really hinges on like this next season or two. Mm-hmm. If they win, he's great. If anything goes wrong, bye bye. See you later. Yep. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button and subscribe for more content and find the link to our full podcast and all our socials in the description down below. Also, don't forget to turn on those notifications to get live updates on new videos that we release.